As we move forwards to autumn, we're going to a small village in Staffordshire for the last dance of the summer. This tradition was never revived, it's continuous. It goes back hundreds of years through generations of local families and it's the oldest dance that England has. Why are we here this morning I'm at the back of a butcher's? <laughs> I'm coming to pick my pig's bladder up ready for the day. You don't see many around these days, they're hard to come no, by. they're hard to come by, yeah. So do you have, how, how do you get yours? Let's just say I get it. It's not like I'm a vegetarian or anything. Oh, that really is a pig's bladder. <laughs> <laughs> the Abbots Bromley Horn Dance takes place each year on the first Monday of September and it starts in an unlikely place. How does it sit against being in a church? Well, for me, it sits all right. I mean, it's pagan with a small P, isn't yeah. it? It's not exactly, yeah, it's not a... Uh, it's friendly pagan. <laughs> <laughs> following the dancers in a day-long trip through the countryside to the local stately home Bliffield Hall. I live in Abbots Bromley, I've been here for about 25 years and uh, watch the horn dance nearly every year. But they're reindeer horns, so we think they came from Viking stock brought down the River Trent. One of the fragments of a horn was taken some years ago and carbon dated to about 1050. That's so old, isn't it? That's about all that's really known. No one knows whether it's a fertility rite or anything else, it's just theory. <laughs> It's quite really different. Yeah, it's everything. really different from anything we've seen growing up or anything as well. It's really kind of magical and graceful and the horns are absolutely beautiful. Well, I've been in the horn dance 21 years this year. Started when I was four on the triangle. And then I've been doing the hobby horse for about four or five years now. The hobby horse, he's in charge of rounding all the deer up and keeping them in order. Supposedly Maid Marion kills him, but that's the story. Oh, really? Supposedly. And the, the little lad that has the arrow, so is, he, is he firing, he's firing he's at you? He's firing at me, that's right, yeah. So he's trying to kill you as well? That's it, everyone's a bit of me, so. <laughs> yeah, wearing a very fetching frock there. Yeah, it's uh, the Maid Marion frock. Do you feel silly? Uh, sometimes. Most <laughs> of the time, around the, the, the rest of the group and that. Yeah. You get a bit of banter between them. Yeah, it's a good laugh. Yeah, they, they call it a cock and a frock. <laughs> <laughs> As we're following the dancers, it's extraordinary to think that this path has been trodden for hundreds of years and they've visited the same farms for hundreds of years. <laughs> I was told when I came to this farm about 40 years ago that it was my duty to continue the tradition by the previous farmer. Really? Um, yes. His family were here for about 100 years. Uh, it to do with superstition? Oh, not that I knew of. He never said it was superstition. <laughs> he, he said it was fertility uh, to help the crops and yeah. things like that. So I thought, oh, I'd better stick with this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't want to look at Yeah, absolutely. So he must have worked for him, and I think he's worked for us as well. Let's go with the swimming pool. 
So how far do you reckon you've uh, come today then? Um, Good few miles? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, so far. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this may be our oldest tradition, but they have had to make a few concessions to modern life. Did they used to actually yeah, walk? No, it used to last for a week. But now you've got a van, so you don't need to walk. <laughs> Finally, we're arriving at Bliffield Hall, where the Baggett family has greeted the dancers for many years. We're waiting in, in the queue to speak to Lady Baggett. Thank you for letting us come and uh, uh, see your gorgeous home and the, the <laughs> phone dancers. Is it uh, something that you, you've watched all your life? Not quite all my life, but yeah. quite a long time. It's 64 years since I saw the first phone dance. Is it? Yes. Wow. It was in 1946, and it was rather a misty morning. And the first thing we heard was the little triangle beating, and then we saw the tips of the horns coming up out of the mist from the mill down in the valley, and there was nobody else here at all. I felt as though I'd gone back in time. They've been coming ever since there's been a hall here. We enjoy having them <laughs> back every year. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It wouldn't be the same at all without the horn dancers. We're really privileged to be allowed across the other side of the moat because on the other side, well, the other commoners like ourselves. We've managed to sneak in, it's brilliant. Is it part of your family that you... Well, my dad's been doing it for about 42, 43 years. And then uh, he asked me to come along and join him. Mm. And then this year, Ollie's big enough to sort of come out and do it. So there's three, three generations? Yes, there's three generations of our family, three generations of the Fowls, there's two generations <laughs> of the Baileys. Your family is linked very much with this tradition, is it? It is, right? yes, yeah. yeah. And, but, but your dad only had daughters? Yeah, six of us. It's more important, certainly to my dad, that it's our family that were in it rather than people from the village or males. Yeah. So was it quite controversial when you started dancing because you were a woman? Yes. Well, so wasn't it? Yeah. The folk circles didn't like girls being in it. Because even the day that uh, I danced that day when I was 14, they christened me Ernie that day. <laughs> and everyone was calling me Ernie <laughs> just because it was a male name. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, so yeah. but it's interesting that um, outsiders didn't like it, but actually it's, it's not theirs, it's yours, isn't it? Yeah, so exactly. It's yeah. not really up to anybody else but to who can do it, isn't it? Yeah, but it's not just a tradition, it's our family tradition. Yeah, so it's, you know, we feel like we want to be part of it, don't we? <laughs> this is a tradition that is safeguarded by family, but yet they're very welcoming to outsiders and there's a very generous atmosphere about the tradition. So have you seen the Abbots Bromley Horn dance every year? Every year, we celebrate every year. What do you think of it? Well, I thought it's a bit strange, you know, but it's a good day out for the villagers as well. I'll give you that one. You're the youngest. So. Oh, yeah. oh, what do I do? Right, you rest it on your rest it like that, and I'll put one hand on there. I'm not being rude, but hold the shaft. <laughs> oh, <laughs> They are a thousand years old. <laughs> Let's not have a fight with them. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm dizzy. Oh, my God, it's heavy. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> One of the admirable things about Abbots Bromley is the way that they bend the rules just to fit the times and to fit circumstances, yet they don't feel threatened that that might dilute their tradition because there's an inner confidence that is unquestionable. It's really good, wasn't it, Bert? It's really exciting. I can't believe I have horn danced. Our dad would be very proud. <laughs> he would, wouldn't he? <laughs> Well, his first time, he's only just five, and we didn't expect him to last this time. But so he wanted to come back to church, and here he is.